Hello, I'm Tim Brooksbank and I'm here to show you the Kramer VP794. Now today I'm telling you about how to use a VP794 to drive an LED video wall. So here we have a section of an LED video wall. This in fact is a lighthouse screen. So we have six panels from a lighthouse screen here together with the screen processor or controller. All LED screens have screen components made of tiles a screen processor or serializer, it's sometimes called, or interface card, and a scaler which makes the video picture the correct size for the LED video wall. So today I'm going to explain how you use a VP794 to make the picture the right size and the right colour and look good on your LED video wall. So, here's how you set up a VP794 to drive an LED video wall. But first of all, let me tell you what's special about scanning for LED video walls, because it's rather different from driving a projector or an LCD monitor. Now, everyone's familiar in the AV world with standard resolutions for projectors and LCDs. They're typically, typically called VESA modes or SEMPTI modes or CEA modes. We've all heard of 720p, 1080p, XGA, which is 1024 768. Most of us nowadays have heard of things like WuxGA 1920 by 1200, which a lot of modern projectors are. But LED video walls are different. The critical thing is that LED video walls are built out of cubes or tiles, each with a very small number of pixels, typically 64 by 48 pixels or 48 by 48 pixels. Some have a little more, but even the ones with a lot of pixels typically have. 100 pixels, 150 pixels across per tile. So what happens is the LED wall is constructed from an array of these tiles which all act together as one big display. This means that the resolution you end up with has nothing to do with any standard resolution that you find on a projector or an LCD monitor, but is purely based on how many tiles across the screen is and how many tiles tall the screen is. So you need a scaler which can scale on the fly at setup time to any resolution, pixel accurate. And that's precisely what the VP794 can do when you put it in its special LED processing mode. Now we'll have a look at the VP794 and how to put it into the LED processing mode and how to set up the key attributes such as the size of the picture, setting the sharpness and quality of the picture and also calibrating the colour of the picture. Ready for doing the setup of the picture size. So I select the test pattern. Now the default test pattern here is grey vertical bars. That's not really helpful for setting up the sizing. I'm going to turn the job wheel and select um, I like using the Sempty test pads and the Sempty colour bars because they're nice and easy to set up with. They're bright, you can see what's going on and they have defined edges. So now I've selected that, I'm going to go into the output menu and I'm going to select the output window size which I've turned on and first of all I'm going to adjust the left edge of the picture. Now what you'll see here is as I turn the jog wheel the left edge of the picture will move. You can just start to see the white bar moving, but the right edge of the picture will stay put. At the moment we're compressing the image in, and we're just right. Can you see that's too far? I'll turn the dial back a little bit, and we're just kissing the edge of the screen. So we've set the left edge up now. So I'll go back, and I'll go to the right edge. So now I'll turn the dial, it's quite a long way down, I've only 144 pixels here. So I'm going to turn the dial down, and the clever thing is the left edge of the picture will stay put as I turn down the dial to bring it onto screen. And you'll see at the right side of the screen here, I've just gone a little bit too far, so each click of the job wheel takes me back one pixel, and that's it. I've set my picture up 144 pixels wide. The starting point is at pixel 84, and the end point is pixel 276. Now I'm going to do the top and bottom of the image. So I'll go to select the top edge and I'll adjust the top edge and bring it down. Oh, and there it is on screen, just overshot a little, about one click at a time on the jog wheel, and there we are, perfect. Now you wouldn't be able to do that with a zoom function, because a normal zoom function would have messed up the left and right edges while I was doing that. Next, bottom edge. I've got a long way to come up on this because I'm only 96 pixels tall. So let's come all the way up and there we are. The magic number is 154. 
and that's it. I've set up the picture size correct on the screen. What you'll now find is that when I select my input channel, it will automatically scale my input to fit that window size that I've set up. So I'm going to press HDMI because I've, I know I've got an input on my HDMI input channel. Press HDMI. And here we go. I have a 1920 1080p signal coming in and here it is displayed on the screen. As you can see, the image is not quite the right aspect ratio. That's because my actual LED wall is a strange aspect ratio and the scaler is trying to keep the aspect ratio correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my geometry menu. Now in here, I can either use the overscan function, which zooms the picture up to 10%, which isn't enough for you really to see on here. I need more adjustment than that, so I'm going to go to the pan tilt zoom menu. I'm going to turn pan tilt zoom on. And in this instance, I'm going to leave it as use global because I'm tracking an adjustment that applies to my screen rather than the specific input. But I only want to do vertical correction. So I'm, at the moment, aspect lock is off, which is what I want. So I can alter H and V zoom separately. I'm going to set vertical zoom and I'm going to zoom up. And you can see the picture zooming up. And I'm going to zoom up until I'm about the right size on screen. Nearly there quite fine, it's 0.1% steps, so I've got to turn it quite a long way, it lets me set this quite accurately. There we go, that's about right. So there we go, now I've set the picture on my screen. Other things that I might want to adjust would be in the colour menu. Now LED screens often have slightly different coloration from normal screens, so here I can set the black level, the contrast, the saturation, the hue, and the RGB values as well as the colour temperature. Importantly, I can set the saturation, hue, brightness, contrast, even if it's a digital input or a computer input. So for example, if I select saturation, if I turn the saturation down, you can see the colour goes from the picture and it becomes black and white. If I turn the saturation up, you can see the, picture, the colour getting heavier in the picture. Let's put that back to default for now. So you can see what the control does. The other thing I can do here is I might want to go on to the RGB values. So for example, red bias, red gain, green bias, green gain, blue bias and blue gain. The bias settings set the black point, the gain settings set the white point. So if I want to put more red in the picture content itself, here we go, we've just had the video loop and it started off again and now we have a blue picture. So that's quite hard to show you more red, but let's give it a try. So we'll turn up the red gain and you can see the picture's getting very red there. Or if I turn it back down to normal, you can see we have normal red. That's excessive, but it gives you an idea of how you can calibrate the colour accurately. And this is per input channel, so you can calibrate for different types of inputs. The other area where you can make adjustments is the enhancement menu, where you can adjust the detail and the sharpness. Now here, when we're filming to show you on the internet, you won't really see a lot of difference on that. You also might notice some wire fringing on the picture. That isn't really there. Unfortunately, that's just a side effect of how we're filming this screen with a camera and showing it to you online. So you won't really have that wire on a real picture. What I want to show you now is I can change input channels, so I'm going to change from my HDMI input, and I'm going to change to my Composite Video 1 channel, because I know I have a, a signal on there. So I'm going to change to Composite Video 1, the screen's going to relock to that, and here we are. We have my, my DVD playing. There's not an awful lot of resolution on this, because we have a very really low res screen, but you can see it's made the picture more or less right. It's not quite right, because with it being a composite video signal, you tend to need a little bit of overscan to trim the edges. So I'm going to go into the geometry menu. Overscan for this signal is set at 1% at the moment. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. Let's go to, I'm at 4% there and it's just right. So the nice thing is now if I go back to HDMI, notice there's a little resync flash there. 
that's because you're in the I.O. lock mode. And in I.O. lock mode, the scaler has to relock the vertical sync to, set, to match the new input to give you lowest latency. If you're in a situation where you want to switch cleanly and you don't want to be in I.O. lock mode, you have two choices. First of all, you can collect, connect a Genlock signal, which you typically would do in a live event situation, then the switching will be clean. The alternative is you can go into the system menu of the VP794 and you can turn off the I.O. lock function and set it to what's called free run mode, and then it will switch cleanly. So that's an overview of VP794 and how to set it up for LED video walls. There are a myriad of functions in VP794 that allow you to fine tune the performance of the picture and the performance of VP794 to suit your application. These are things which more advanced users will find by experimenting with the box and also by looking through the user manual and the setup guides which are available online on the Kramer website.